choice of words really matter. You said that. So now to bring in, to bring in expressions, you choice of words really matter. And you, you, you might have written something which you don't mean what that is. You know, to bring in meaning into your speech, you choose different types of words. Isn't it? That is when you use a thesaurus. You know what is the word and what are the other meanings of the word. So now, to draft a good speech, word choices are very important. And you should use the best words uh, available to make the uh, speech impact. So today we have KTM uh, BSV Prasad who will tell us the uses of how to use uh, words in uh, your speeches. With a thunderous round of applause. Let us Thank you, Dostmaster, for that lovely introduction. I love the introductions, especially about myself. How many of you attended the Master class on public speaking. Master class. Only two. Just not be intended for it. That means you just major. But who attended? First one. The very first class. Right. Now, because you didn't attend, it gives me one more opportunity to tell you what all I want to tell you again. What is the objective of a speech? Quick answers. What is the objective of a speech? To try a person. <coughs> Communications, I should drive across what you want to say in a more effective and good way. Any other thoughts? Uh, to say what I want to say. That is the purpose of speaking. And what is the tool for speaking? What do we use for speaking? Language. Language. Words. 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 Right. And what is the number of words that you need to know to be a very effective English language speaker? How many words do you need to know? First of all, how many words are there in English language? <laughs> Millions. Last call, Google says 1.7 lakhs. How many should I know out of that to be considered a good speaker? You will be surprised. 3,000 to 3,500. If I know those many words, I will be a good speaker. Look at what that means. With your experience, all of you will be at least around 1500 to 2000 anyway. Whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not. Because you have been doing so much of studying, reading, getting exposed to all sorts of media, movies, TV. It's all here. And one thing to remember as a public speaker is to trust the physical system that you have. Which are the best video recorders available in the world? Video recorder. Once I see something, I will never forget. Audio recorders? <coughs> yes. And the best hard disk ever? Right. You are already prepared. What is the proof of that? You can trust this system because you will even remember the first telephone number that we ever had. Right? How many of you think you can recall that? First telephone number. It could be a landline, it could be a mobile phone. How come? And the same person will tell me that I do two more things, sir, I forget. I only say one thing, there is nothing called forgetting. It is only not remembering. You remember that particular number because you wanted to remember it. Even now if you see a new important phone number comes up, how many of you will just remember? Just like that. You will maybe think about it twice, thrice, maybe write down once or twice. That's it. Then what? There. First thing is to remember that you have a working, performing brain. That's where the public speaking starts. Then, there are three things that I want to cover in this. <coughs> Understand the functions of a spoken word. What is a word supposed to do? Number one. Number two, how do you select the right words? What different types of words are needed? You need to use clear words vivid words and words that are appropriate to that particular audience and to the context. These three things. Then, obviously, we need to avoid some mistakes. Some general mistakes that we need to avoid. First of all, again, word. 
Now, obviously, those of you who know the answer to this question, please keep quiet. The rest of you can participate. Kicha Kicha Chu. All question marks. Kicha Kicha Chu. Anybody else remembers what it is? He can share. What is it? No, no. Not you. It's a dark monkey. It's a dark monkey. Good. Ah, see now. Kicha Kicha Chu is a one foot black monkey somewhere in South Africa. Now, if I tell you that, right? Next time I say Kicha Kicha Chu, what happens? Instantly there is a picture of a small black monkey. Right? That comes to your mind. That is the purpose of a word. A word has to create a picture in the audience's mind. Otherwise it has no meaning. It is useless. Got it? If I use a word for which you don't understand the meaning, that means my purpose of speaking is wasted. That is why the word has to be clear, it has to be vivid. When I say, I don't just say a black monkey, I say one foot black monkey. Now we all know one foot is so much black monkey. Those of you who know South Africa go over there, South Africa. And if you have been there, you will actually visualize the South African forest mm -hmm. and the monkey sitting on a tree. Right? That is the purpose of painting pictures with words. The next project is about when I read the text of your speech, I should be transported to that place. I should be able to see, create those pictures. And one simple other exercise, how to do this. Suppose I say, I have a pet. We will start here. I have a pet. What do you understand? Maybe dog. Dog. Yeah, some, some favorite cat or some cat. It's not a yeah. What, what comes to your mind? I have a pet. One year old, golden retriever. Golden. I didn't say any of that. Not <laughs> <laughs> that Right, so, now if I say I have a pet dog, then you will have a dog. Some dog will come to his mind. Then I have a pet dog or man. No, assuming that you, everybody knows what a dog or man is, dog or man retriever. I have a pet six month old dog or man. Now, if earlier the one was this much in size, once I said six month old, it will come to this. Right? I have a pet black six month old our man. Uh, our man mostly are black. I don't know if there is a white over man also. Probably. So it becomes black if we had it white. Then if I say I had I have a pet six month old black dover man jumping on the white sofa in my drawing room. What happened? It was first a picture of some vague pet. Then slowly it would be a dog man, then it would be a black puppy, then it would be by so far jumping. So from a picture to a video. That is the purpose of speaking. Note the difference between the first. I could have simply said I have a pet and then would have had told my story. But that won't convey, especially when I want to say the whole thing. So whatever the subject is, the words have to be so precise, clear, and each word has to have a specific meaning that will be understood by each and everybody. Now the key challenge again is, many times the audience is very, very diverse. If the audience is completely the same within your organization, they understand the language, you stick to your absolute jargon of the <coughs> office, use those words. Like I was sharing, if I say MS, HSD, how many of you will understand? MS is? Manufacturing system. MS? Microsoft. Master of Science. Master of Science. For me, it is motor spirit. <laughs> motor spirit means petrol. Right? So, if I say HSD, hardware solution, development, <laughs> <laughs> it is high speed diesel. 
Now, if I use those words without introducing them first to you and then explaining the meaning and then taking it for it. In the speech, I have to, if I have to use it, I have to explain it twice before I move ahead and talk about it. First of all, I don't have a business talking about those things in this, in this audience. You won't relate unless it is very, very appropriate, number one. So, that, such jargon I have to totally avoid. Keep the words simple for the audience, right? What they can relate to. Now, loaded words. Some words bring out certain images in the family in people's mind. Simple example. Politician. What image comes? Some image comes there. And mostly it is not so valid. Yes or no? In our Indian context, mostly it is not valid. Then what? If you were to deal with a subject about that, if I am talking about politician, I need to be very aware how the audience is going to take it. Whether emotionally they are connected. Or, for example, some diseases. If I am going to talk about some diseases, some people will have very personal experiences, very emotional experiences. So I have to assess looking at the audience also. Even after I start speaking, I may have to make some minor corrections to the way I say certain words. Because I can that will be the next level. Then there are some fallacies. There are what is a fallacy? A K L N A C Y fallacy. What is a fallacy? If I tell you I need answers, and answers are at our fingertips, because Mr. Shiva just shared, no? Alexa, what is fallacy? Google. Why don't I should have the answer? There are so many smartphones here. Fallacy. Fallacy is mistake, sir. See, even now, with all my experience, when I find some word, I think the meaning is this. But when I actually look it up, it is somewhat different or sometimes it is totally different. That is the form of English language. So what is fallacy? Mistaken belief, especially one based on unsound argument. Mistaken belief. Fallacy, mistaken belief. Now, what are some fallacies people will say? One fallacy is say all politicians are bad. Are all politicians bad? Definitely not. Yes? I know that I know for sure. Cannot be, you know. In a population, 100 percent cannot be bad. At least 5 or 6. Like they say, you know, uh, 5, 95 percent bad lawyers bring bad, bad name to the rest 5 percent. Right? <laughs> Something like that. But that is all generalizations. As a speaker, you cannot afford to generalize anything. Today's speeches also, I heard some places, some people say generally everybody is like that. Everybody. Generalizations are to be avoided because you never know which section of the audience you are talking to actually is opposite of that. Supposing if sitting here, if I say all positions are definitely bad, I am going to have an enemy in Shiva. Right? She say what? So we don't do that. We don't generalize. Second, ease. Ease. Ease means what? You know the fun of the English language. When I say ease, something ease. Current. Current. Comfort. Comfort. Ease. Comfort. Ease. No, not E-A-S-E. Ease. I-S. Ease. Get, get us a present. Current. Ease means grammatically. It is present. It is going to be there. Like right? when I say there is this building, right? And assuming you understand that the building is there, it will continue to be there. Present continues. But such sort of identity. Let us say he is like that. He is a lazy person. How do you know? For all I know, if I give him a very interesting task, he might be the most active person on the earth. How many of us have seen that with ourselves, with other people? If it is something that I am very much interested in, I will be all energy. If I am not interested, I will be the dullest, laziest. But if somebody were to say that I am the, if 
somebody refers to me and says he is lazy. How will I react? I won't like it. Generalization again. So no generalization, no ease. Now, there are some words that will end the discussions. Like for example, final finalities. It says somebody declares my team is unbeatable. It's like Virat Kohli declaring for RCB. <laughs> Finality, now this time, is Allah Cup Namade. How many times have we heard that? Malay. Is Allah Cup Namade. Hindi. We have heard that. That's how the power of you know, saying certain things yes. doesn't work. You cannot say with definite certainty. You have to keep the option open for the audience to process themselves. As a speaker, if I keep on saying that no, this is it, this is it, this is it, what will happen? You are forcing things to our It is like mind. our evaluator saying must, should, have to, you need to. That means, I'm, see, the moment somebody says you have to do this, what happens? How do you feel? You feel bad and ugly? Like okay. Bad and ugly. No force. You have this force. force. No choice. No option. Whereas if I can say, you can do this. Next time you do this, you can do this. Maybe you can that softens the approach and then opens up the possibility of being able to. Then, before we, because I want to come back and analyze his speech also, to demonstrate. One final thing, when you are constructing your speech, so far you have been writing down the speech and then speaking. Now onwards you can do the other way. Speak the speech and then how do you do that? Record the video and okay. then play it. Speak the speech. Speech is what? Spoken language. When I start speaking, there is a very different way I will speak versus the way I start writing. We are all very good essay writers from childhood. Whatever language, whatever it is. We are very good essay writers. It means grammatically correct and full sentences absolutely. Right? Commas and full stops will be there in the writing, but they disappear when we come here. How many of you agree? Yes. Commas and full stops are there in writing, but when you come here, they are gone. Where they go, we don't know. They are they, they displaced by and, um, uh, so, like, you know. We know all that. Now, how do we... But I have observed some of you have done away with them quite a lot. How do we do this speaking your speech? It's like imagine that you are talking to somebody as you are beginning to write this speech, you are talking. So, how do you talk? Now, normally we say, good evening friends, I want to share a story with you. But the key thing is very simple, even as you are speaking. Simple words, short sentences, short paragraphs. That's it. Simple words, Short sentences. Any sentence with more than five to six words is not a sentence, it's a paragraph. Any sentence with more than five words is a paragraph. So you have to forcefully cut it. Observe how I am speaking. I am not continuously going on and on. Every yes. sentence. Yes, five words or five sentences? Five words in a sentence. More than five words in a sentence is paragraph. Because then you are stretching the sentence, you are not giving the audience time to absorb, especially when you are using some very good words like our friend Shashi Tharoor. And there are Shashi Tharoor songs. Be aware. Be aware. <laughs> exactly. That is why. Then the, when each sentence is more than 5 six, then your parallel has 5-6 sentences, it becomes too much at a stretch for the audience to pick up. Number one. Number two, keep it simple, speaking style. What happens when you keep on speaking non-stop? 
people in which interest. Audience will In fact, today's experience was somewhat different for me because I was not observing any of the speakers. I had a good time. And I learned a new skill of actually picking up emotions more. I do it whenever I do it whenever I mentor a speech for this particular uh, project, I do it for my mentee, but today the entire spectrum I did it to observe how it was a good learning by itself. But again coming back to the main issue, short sentences, start speaking. Now you have to detach yourself from the written mode. Right? Don't start writing as yet. Keep your recorder on. Talk. If you want to say open with a particular quotation, okay, what is your quotation? Okay. Say that quotation. Then address the audience. Good afternoon, Toastmasters, fellow speech crafters, guests, evaluators, organizers, organizers, whatever you want to do. Say that. Write it down. And then point one, point two, point three. Point one. You select the point, talk about the point, whatever comes to your mind. Which also means that you do some research on those things, what you want. Hmm? Bullet points, your own notation, whatever you want. Have that material, point one, point two, point three, ready. Point one, you talk about it, speak about it. Then you see the difference the kind of words that will come out will be the natural words with which you are confident, competent, comfortable. Those words will come because you are speaking, you are not writing. When, you are, when I am writing, there is a tendency, I will write down what I think are very good words. The grammatical flow has to be there, all that I will be thinking. But when I am speaking, I am not bothered. I want to say something, I will say it the way I want to say it. So, say that for that one paragraph. Capture it on audio. Listen to that. Only of you transcribing, transcribing. Transcriptions, right? What do they do? They get audio recordings, they convert it into. So, you are actually doing a transcription of your own speech. First, speak it out, write on paragraph by paragraph. And then you see how your speeches come out. Let us first see one such speech, which I will then dissect and see how it comes out. So, please welcome. What is the difference between man and a superman? Man man can walk, superman can fly. Sword, which is uh, which was connected to his belt. 
he made me sit on his table and he spoke to me and he asked me what I wanted to become. And he asked me, asked me whether I want to join the army. He, my son, my father told him he is interested in aeroplanes. He told me that you have to become, go to Air Force now. After that incident, my journey to discover Superman had started. Recently, I stumbled upon two books written by an author called Astin Ferris. We had that author called Astin Ferris has written two books. The first book is uh, Tools of Titans. Second book is called as Tribe of Mentors. In these books, what uh, Tim Ferriss has done, Tim Ferriss has interviewed around 150 major celebrities, millionaires, actors, great actors, and he has discovered some patterns in them, why they are great. So he has uh, consolidated the patterns which he has discovered in the conclusion. He tells these great men have something in common. So that is they have something called as daily routine. So daily routine has two parts, one is called as morning routine, one is called as evening routine. So these people it seems have well developed routines. So we will see what the daily or morning routine is. Early morning the celebrities wake up early in the morning, they are not night owls, they are all early birds. They wake up somewhere around 4.30 to 5 o'clock, afterwards they present, they practice something uh, something called as silence. It may be a prayer or meditation or something like that. After that, they make their bed. What is making the bed? Arranging your bed. Yeah, putting things back so that you can come and use your bed in the night. Most of us sleep and just throw it and run away and come and night and we clean the bed. So they make the bed early in the morning. This is one of the habits practiced with the American Army, Navy, and Air Force, even by the Indian ones. But there, there's a prominent uh, author who has written some book on making your bed. So that is making your, that is one of the habits they have cultivated. After that, they do some sort of affirmations. I told you about uh, affirmations in my last speech. Affirmations means you uh, you think about some somebody and you bless them. So that is affirmation. After, then uh, they do some sort of uh, like if, uh, if you want to be a, if you want to become a great person. You try to recall his name. I want to be the next um, some businessman name, sportsman name. So you keep repeating that to yourself. That is called as affirmations. Self of your affirmations is called as. I want to win the next world cup. I want to become the chartered accountant. So you keep telling yourself what you want to become. That is affirmations. So after that, they do some brief exercises, and uh, exercises may include. Uh, what not, it may include uh, again meditation, it may include a brisk walk or run, whatever. So after that, they do something called as reading. They read something before they leave to the office and they do something called as scribing, scribing is journal. In the morning, you are supposed to read something related to business, something related to work, and uh, in the evening, you are supposed to read something related to, I come to the evening routine. I was talking about, sorry. And I and I will take over. Thank you very much. Okay. Give me a big round of applause. Now, he has made a point. That is why I cut him short. We have seen him enough to know that he is capable of finishing it completely. Thank you very much. One more round of applause. Now, we have to see and dissect his speech. Now, first question: Was were his words simple, easy to understand? Yes. Number two, were the sentences too long or was he giving you time to process the sentence before he went on to the next sentence? Did you at any time feel that he was going too fast and not allowing you to understand? No. And was he going from one, first of all, my main point, was it in his, was, it, was the speech in a conversational tone or was it in a grammatically absolutely correct written mode? He was speaking to you. How many of you sense that? Right? Now that only comes when he actually thinks in the spoken voice and then writes the speech. The speech, same speech would have written in an essay form. If we were to give him the task of writing an essay about that, it will come out in a different format. 
So two for parts he has already done quite well. And description of Sam Manekshaw's soul, right? While well, I would have actually put in a lot more details into the first thing is when you introduce the character of Sam Manekshaw, how many of you know Sam Manekshaw? See, in the audience only three people know. Right. Now, when you said his boss, Sam Manecha, the impression that you wanted to create was that he is a big man and my father took me to such a big man. Now, none of them had that idea that he is a big man. Even though later on you described him a bit, initially you created excitement while writing, by describing Sam Manecha, a six foot story. I don't know if he was six. He was six. He was six. He is a Kodawa, right? So, Six foot soldier, majestic presence, when he stood tall, enemies would shiver, create that hype and then say, he was my father's boss. And when you do that, now I put body language, vocal language also in that because that is how the whole thing will come out when you do this. Right? So that you can add. Another thing, when you talk, introduce new names and characters. Tim Ferris. How many of you know Tim Ferris? Nobody. First time I heard, I, I, I couldn't hear in the first place Tim Ferriss. How many of you could make out Tim Ferriss? So when we speak, that that is why, see, one thing that public speaking gives, the disadvantage of public speaking is, I get one shot at saying what I want to say. Right? I can't, unlike a book, if it is a book, I can keep reading till I understand. The same Tim Ferriss, I, I can read again and again to my book. But if, when he said Tim Ferriss, if he hadn't repeated, I also wouldn't have understood who that is. He repeated it after that. So one thing we can do and we must do, this is a must I, I will say. Even though in evaluation we say can, this is a must. We must repeat some important points in the speech. Like for example, key things like Sam Manesha. In fact, you can expand Sam Bahadur. He was known as Sam Bahadur. Create Remember, I have a pet versus the rest of it. Like that, we build more and more. Repetitions. And of course, again, the more of description of Superman's dress code. You just left it with one simple sentence. What was the sentence you said? Layering of clothes. Layer of clothes. How many of you understood that? Again, one. Layer of clothes. What is the difference between man and superman? Superman wears his underwear outside. That is what is layering of clothes. Now, layering of clothes is basically how I would put it in written form. For the audience to understand, Simple, he wears his underwear out. In fact, we had a major winning competition speech by one of the speakers where he actually wore an underwear on his yeah. suit to prove a point of Superman, similar subject. So, more this precision, 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 precision. That is how you communicate with the audience. Imagine that you are telling your five-year-old or six-year-old or if you are a teacher, you are uh, you know, explaining things to your teenager, student. How many times will you repeat? You will repeat once, twice, thrice. Audience also is like that. You have to repeat when required. Okay, and final thing about speech writing, express ideas in threes. What we call as triads. Triads means talking about the same thing in three different ways. An example sentence that they give is, we mutually pledge uh, to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. That is a statement. We mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our honor. The purpose of the statement is that we are a team, we are all together, we will help each other to succeed, we are committed to that. But does that meaning come more strongly when we use all these three together? 
that is the purpose of trials. And I will be sharing some documents, you can read that. The purpose is simple. Next speech, I will not be listening or even seeing you. I want to read the text. And I should still get a major portion of what you want to say. Descriptions. Create the images, mental images. What you did with your voice, you will be doing with your words. Create. We are talking of an accident scene. The auto was crushed behind the truck. The front portion was totally jammed. There was plenty of wheel everywhere. Only one example. That writing itself should give us very... That's what in English language we call as graphic detail. Explaining something in graphic detail. You draw pictures. Right? Questions? Any questions? How many minutes is this speech? Actually, the project says three to five minutes. I think with only eight people in the frame, we, we can have three to five. Because the final one will be also more. How long is the speech? Four to five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. It's a good time. Now you are ready for five and seven also. But four to five is good. Right? Eight or ten of you have to speak. It will take a long time. Mm -hmm. Also, the impulse or the impulse is the five minutes. Right. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. On how to write the speech. Now, what did I say? Speak the speech the way you want to speak the speech. Mm -hmm. Right? I am not saying writing. Writing comes after you speak and then write. And you see the difference how it comes out. Because I have seen in all my years of experience in Toastmasters, the speeches that win are the speeches that have an ongoing conversation with the audience, treating them like friends and then talking in spoken language. And personalized. I, me, you are, our... Those four words have to be utilized in your speech at least two to three times. I know some of you are already doing it. But by design, when you put those words, I is natural, but you have to be more specific. I was like that. I am like this. I want to be like that. I. How do you feel about this? How many of you have seen this? He, he also used those issues. Observe. How many of you remember your comics? Right? Immediately, I know some of you are going to come down and ask for these things. Engage the audience in a spoken manner. And your job is done. My job is done. If there are no questions, back to the coordinator.